Welcome everyone. Actually, this, uh, this is going to be a continuation of our conversation which started yesterday uh, with Heinrich. We, we've started uh, discussing the show and maybe we can come back to some interesting points. For, um, it's interesting for me to speak uh, to Heinrich about this show because he knows uh, very well the, the work of Joel and has the outsider view, simultaneously outsider's view on this show, whereas I was very much inside the whole process. Um, yesterday you, you mentioned the concept of Marcel Duchamp, machine celibataire in relation to the um, pink room, the pink room <laughs> of this show. And I found it, it might be an over-interpretation, but even if, uh, I find it very attractive <laughs> intellectually <laughs> and convincing. <laughs> so could you explain? Um, yeah. Um. The, the mechanics of this machine, which is, the pink room. There are, there are many arguments uh, uh, or many associations uh, going through our conversation and different uh, particles. Uh, and uh, I always uh, come back or I refer sometimes to the mechanic of language uh, which is mirroring in the work and is, is mirroring in the show. And uh, the mechanic of language or about narration we talked uh, yesterday and immediately I had at once this, I, I don't know if I can explain it clearly, uh, I had this uh, uh, image in my mind uh, that this room uh, behind there, uh, maybe it's an obscure idea, has something uh, to do uh, with uh, uh, the myth uh, or the or is an analogy to the, uh, the uh, machine celibataire, uh, but why? Um, it's just a particle of a uh, of uh, uh, field of associations. Uh, but Michel Carouge, as I uh, uh, quoted out, uh, wrote this uh, myth, uh, he analyzes the myth, uh, what is the uh, machine celibataire and what is the function of it. Uh, in, uh, and when I came into this room, I, 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 I thought uh, uh, it, um, 
you, you don't see normally the, the work of a woman in this context, maybe it's different, or, but what is the function and what is, is there an analogy? And um, uh, I think uh, it's not uh, talked so often in this context about this uh, mechanic, but when I entered this room I thought uh, there is this um, really a uh, mechanical part uh, come into the third dimension uh, by uh, using a form from something uh, uh, different uh, from in context, becomes in this context unlogical, but it's in the syntax of the organization, it becomes a part. Uh, and I don't know if it's a masculine part, but it's a really hardcore uh, mechanical part from uh, it's often used, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's the arm comes from uh, cinema, it's, it's the most invisible object while shooting films or, uh, or uh, making uh, photos. And here it becomes uh, very visible. It's, uh, and it's cinema, maybe also it's more uh, traditionally more uh, uh, male, uh, um, sphere. It's a mechanical part out of a different context becomes unlogical in this context uh, where, where, it's, where to which it is transformed and this is a, a, a theoretical argument from Carouge within this uh, syntax of this uh, me, uh, me mechanic uh, form. And at the end of the arm, what is it that is at the end of this, this arm, this, uh, this machine, the, the arm is normally used for um, something very important. And here at the end, there is this uh, pink, uh, organic, uh, transformed uh, toilet, something like a toilet paper, which is also treated uh, um, with a sewing machine. So it's, it's, it's an elevated toilet uh, paper. <laughs> On, and the whole room, the, the whole pink, um, around it is, uh, is an extension of this undefined, almost non-important thing that becomes so important. And uh, yeah, the marriage between this uh, mechanical defined um, object and the rest is what uh, Heinrich sees as uh, um, analogy to machine celibataire. It's uh, dangerous, but uh, it has some uh, associations which, which are tangible. What is machine celibataire? Uh, Maybe you can uh, explain that because that's... The, the original uh, um, uh, type uh, uh, is coming from Duchamp and he invented that and the big glass uh, is the prototype of a machine celibataire. But Carouge uh, uh, invented uh, uh, this machine celibataire in different social contexts and he said uh, it's possible that uh, the, uh, uh, in the literary topos of Kafka, of uh, Chary, of, uh, of Jules Verne, uh, so it's in especially in, in Raymond Roussel uh, where we can stick uh, together because the language model of Raymond Roussel uh, develops uh, a process of speaking within an ambivalent form, uh, uh, which I see very often as a form of uh, mirroring or reference in the organization of this show. Uh, when a form switches in the ambivalent situation from one modus to the other, it has something to do with this phonetic change in the literary model of Roussel. I can explain that later on, uh, but I think this is a topos of modernity uh, where I said yesterday, uh, it's so important that uh, you, we don't insist on narration uh, as an identical form uh, of continuing with questioning the narration. Boros said uh, we are destroying the, the, the machine of um, the authority of narration, we're destroying the machine of our father, we're destroying the uh, permanent uh, 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 big narration, we cut it and we build something new. Uh, in the field uh, uh, by a mechanic uh, uh, of different uh, uh, subversive. Uh, exactly. um, so, that's, uh, so this 
but uh, I lost it. Where do I? Where will I no, I think I think it's interesting what you say with. The, uh, the question of narration, the mechanics, reinvention of what narration <coughs> could be, and then looking at the show, the structure, how strictly the space is, uh, is treated. It's, it's uh, the way the work is hanged in first room is very much related to, to the second room and the third room. It's very systematic, but the system is highly Irrational, one might say. I don't still. I don't find the right word. Self-referent. Uh, uh, it's it's, it's, it's self-referential. Uh, it's a system. Um, in the second room or this work, the the work is in a high level self-referent. But what what is the problem of the big glass from Duchamp? Uh, what is the <laughs> why is it uh, therefore I lost it <laughs> and what what was the what is the machine celibataire? So the function of the machine celibataire is that it uh, uh, can in an either social context uh, with irrationality or in a system of aesthetics, uh, it can bring two fields together uh, uh, in an erotic sexual uh, uh, sense uh, or in a metaphoric. Um, uh, organization uh, uh, in the middle part there is a cut uh, a borderline uh, where the uh, uh, area of women and man is splitting and uh, both are referring from one to each other but uh, uh, it's a splitting uh, line uh, which separates uh, uh, the upper part from the under part. So that's very, uh, uh, this function is very uh, important because it becomes a negative function in coming together with these two parts. Uh, the, the, the female and uh, the, 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 the part of the man and the part of the woman. Uh, uh, it's much more complex uh, because Duchamp said a lot of mechanical subversive forms inside of that syntactic organization, as I said now, but it's pri pr primitive said, is this the function of, uh, uh, of the, in, in one way of the big class. Uh, but it's, it's not just an aesthetic form, it depends very, very much to the process of language, uh, and syntactical organization of the form also. And uh, not in the sense that the narration illustrates uh, the form, in that sense that there is an opposite, uh, uh, much more driven further on by Picabia with the machine uh, uh, images, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that, that's very important, that the text uh, and the language, the word language, I must say, becomes in an opposite uh, uh, moment uh, to the um, visual language. And here uh, a model or a, a form of um, organization starts uh, mm -hmm. further on very much radicalized by the uh, b paintings of Picabia where he said a literary title as I show it to you today which has nothing to do with the uh, image in, in uh, above, uh, where this opposite is really splitting. Uh, uh, and there is a very important text, uh, I think in the 60s, from Michel Certeau, uh, who, uh, who arguments, uh, when the surrealists make a drama of coincidence, what means that, that artists begin uh, to come in opposition uh, by this uh, form of visuality and text? What is this? Uh, uh, why is that so important for a, a social process, a political process, and what does it mean uh, in, the in the new organization of an aesthetic form? It's not just Dada, it's more. It's questioning the narration uh, and organization of a form. Um, yeah. So there but we I are. But I think what is also from there, it's interesting to, look, to think of the work of Joel and uh, uh, think about associations like the arm and the paper, and then the associations she makes on the walls, what she hangs, what she decides to, to hang. Like there is a wall in, in the other room where a wooden square is uh, hanged next to the silver square. 
um, which invites a viewer for making a com comparison, which is almost uh, impossible or irrational. And uh, this type of associations are uh, reoccurring in, on every wa wall, um, and also in the pink room. It's associating, disassociating, but also talking about analogies, about the nature of uh, analogy. Yeah, um, yeah, and this is, uh, this is an interesting point because uh, I think um, as every work from an artist, uh, uh, these works are also in this process of dissociating and associating uh, but I think sometimes uh, it becomes uh, a strong moment in the organization of a show when uh, these forms uh, don't illustrate, when the text does not illustrate the visuality and they become something together, but they are splitting and they are overlapping uh, in a gap. What, For do, you, that, what, what do you mean by they don't illustrate? That they are not representing something? They are this something. Okay. That's what or we talked about the narration. My uh, vision or my fascination uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, fixed uh, by questioning this process of narration and uh, splitting uh, and dissociating uh, uh, sometimes and destroying sometimes uh, the uh, uh, narrative uh, process and questioning this process from one to the other, as you saw it with these two forms in the studio, where this analogy I try to build up uh, from one to the other, but they are dis dissociated, and maybe they can come in a new. Um, they can come in for that in a new analogy and. Uh, when Picabia did this painting and he shows a mechanical form and he's literary sizing this form, uh, the literary word speech uh, is imagining a completely different uh, image to that what we see. So this uh, process of reading and seeing uh, is uh, and may be in a long distance. Uh, and when Broad has said, uh, what is the literature? Well, it's the painting. And what is the painting? Well, it's the literature. It's continuing this process, uh, but not uh, by, more by dissociating and building up the analogy in a new uh, questioning new of the narrative. And I think that's very radical for the yes. aesthetic process in the moment. Uh, and how do you see it? Uh, because in your own practice, you are busy with uh, the question of narrative, associating, disassociating, and defining the or emphasizing the border between one and the other. Like how Joel is busy with that issues uh, as well. But where is the difference? I mean, as aesthetically, there is a huge uh, difference between uh, your work and uh, Joel's. I think it's the distance and the space. Uh, uh, I like this model of these small drawings, but sometimes they are too, for me, uh, they are, the associations are too fast uh, from one to the other. And they uh, come in a, in a big uh, narrowness, but in form, I love this model very much because- What, what do you mean too fast, too little? Mm. I, I see more that there are multiple ways of associating, multi multiple layers. There, there is literal level where one bottle refers to another bottle that is standing in the space, that um, a bean somewhere in the space literally connects to the bean form in one of the collages. Um, if you look to this drawing outside on the wall... That, that's uh, what you mean fast? I, I, I mean, uh, fast means um, 
It pro they provoke uh, a rapidly sense of uh, association within a smaller um, space. Yes. Uh, D, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, so, uh, fast changing um, uh, the analogies of the former. Mm -hmm. So this, when Raymond Roussel, Le Bande de Pillard, uh, and Le Bande de Pillard, it's a process of analogizing the word uh, to a literary model, because uh, Pillard means uh, the, the, um, the bond uh, uh, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the table, and when he changes and said Pia, it, uh, it's just a phonetic uh, change uh, uh, and it means something different. And out of this small difference, uh, he built uh, uh, the whole model for the La Impression du Afrique uh, uh, as a model of uh, uh, imagination uh, out of this um, space. That's clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's very, this process is very similar uh, to the process of um, uh, what we see in the drawings outside. When Which D, the, first drawings? Uh, no. the black and white drawings, uh, when the A is connected to a form, it means that. And in the next context, uh, it means uh, it's the same form, but in the context to another form, it means something else. Yes. So this model of uh, theory of walking, that's the series, uh, the block of collages. In, in the, it's, uh, it's a model of referring uh, to the ambivalence of the sign, either in visuality and, or in uh, word speech. And I think this is the model, uh, this is the interesting model of modernity to which a big Austrian uh, a poet, um, very, very influenced uh, in the other artists, the early Peter Handke and so on, uh, wrote a sensational uh, uh, small piece of literature by this kind of montage. Uh, uh, it's Conrad Bayer and it's the, the head of the Vitus Bering. Uh, and uh, in this model, uh, he has this, uh, we talked a little bit in the coffee house, he has this idea of the king. Uh, the king is the form in the field, uh, but it's also uh, in the chess play, in the chess game, uh, but it's also the king in the field where he's cut it uh, by the head when he's in the battle. So the battle is on the chess game and the battle is in the field of the war. And within one sentence, uh, he... Um, um, he switches. He, I can read afterwards a piece out of that, just in German. Uh, within one sentence, uh, he um, skips. He skips or forwards. He 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 uh, he, uh, he, he, he changes the modus uh, in, within this montage. He changes the modus of uh, representation, uh, the modus of, uh, of narration. He's questioning this uh, modus of language, and he's destroying this modus of representation. And uh, this was a very, very, from this side, it was a very influenced piece uh, of literature because uh, 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 the early uh, works of Peter Hanke were influenced by this uh, kind. Later on, he called it formalistic. Uh, but uh, there, uh, all over Europe, it, it spread this uh, kind of piece of literature and was a very, uh, um, important uh, because in a very uh, radical, uh, uh, when he was in Sweden, he was fucked up by this group, Simon Fürzig, and he was very depressed when he came home. And uh, uh, afterwards, uh, somebody said this was the pr uh, problem for him, that he killed himself, because nobody didn't understand uh, how far he went out with this model. Uh, I don't want now to admire, um, admiring him too much. But what's interesting, when we see out these uh, small drawings, um, uh, this process of ambivalence uh, uh, within the organization of a form is very close to that literary model, but within a visual context. Uh, but it refers to the model of language. Uh, I don't criticize it. I just, I just say there is one modus that it becomes in a narrow, uh, more or less, in a narrow form, a rapid form of uh, reading analogies from one to the other. And what yeah. I showed you yesterday in the studio, I spread it over what I personally prefer, uh, maybe that has to do with my body, uh, that, um, that the, the uh, room 
is much more longer on the table mm -hmm. between two forms. I need that. So you I are need talking that also about physical space, not only mental. But I think... This is the problem. The physical <laughs> space also has to be inside of that. And it's a physical problem uh, within this organization. It's not just an aesthetic uh, problem. And when the form comes too narrow, when the coincidence is too strong, it's a terroristic act uh, of violence, uh, which becomes a physical problem. Sure. But isn't it the case with, with Joel's... Uh, way of building associations that some are very narrow and abrupt and rapid I and some she, are very spread I and think there are she, different... I, mean, I think she's obsessed uh, as a figure sometimes by this process uh, uh, and, and, and sometimes in a very high, rapid way. Yeah. <laughs> because of course it's not only the work, it's not only... Um, the, um, the piece that hangs on the wall, the, the work is also the way the work is arranged, the installation as such, and that also is another layer that speaks, that allows for another type of uh, associations and analogies. Yeah, that's what and we... And also now I would like to um, touch upon the... Um, the fact of uh, in introducing and inviting friends to, to take part in this solo show. As Joelle says herself, it's a solo show where friends, artists are invited to be part of it. And it's uh, not, um, as she says, it's, it might be a sympathetic gesture, but art is never sympathetic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's in a way it's a very violent gesture uh, also which is maybe only possible among friends is joel is uh, appropriating uh, it's something strange happens to the works uh, of the other artists because the question of there is no more um, importance uh, whose work it is it becomes joel's work, the way it's incorpor co incorporated. incorporated. So the authorship is annihilated, is taken over in this friendly, friendly gesture. In this friendly fire. Um, can you... Can I help you? Can you help me? <laughs> within, uh, within which narration? <laughs> Let's not go. <laughs> um, here's how you you are an artist yourself who was uh, you were invited to be one of the friends of the show. But uh, how what's your feeling about uh, this type of uh, amical incorporation? <sighs> I think one of the main questions I'm very interested in as an artist is uh, this kind of uh, distance between you and me, <laughs> the, between uh, forms. And um, I think it's a main question in the aesthetic organization in the present. What should the curator show us? Uh, his subjective. Uh, when, when you said uh, the, uh, the, the show before uh, you did here, you have a romantic, uh, subjective uh, narration and you want to show that. But what should the curator show us with this subjective attitude? I, miss, uh, I mistrust sometimes this kind of um, narration and I ask you, what should the curator show to us within this subjective moment? Um, I'm not sure if I understand. Um, when you hang this painting in the first room on the wall, this was a kind of uh, atmosphere uh, uh, painting, and you said that this show you organized um, has the attitude of a narration of subjective, romantic... Uh, uh, that 
uh, this romantic conceptualism that was more a post factum comment to to the show the f it was not really something uh, thought through before the the show was uh, made I ask myself the way it was yeah. arranged it was more <sighs> intuitive mm -hmm. way of dealing with the pieces of other artists in respect of of each piece but letting them enter sort of conversation without uh, without this proximity that Joelle can afford inviting her friends that's that's very that's why it was extremely interesting for me to work with Joelle on on that uh, project because that's something a curator normally wouldn't do because uh, and uh, that's why also is it a problem of uh, distance uh? It's, i don't think it's as much a problem of a physical distance even though of course it's the it's the easiest way to emphasize a distance is to give a lot of space and air to a thing and that's but uh, Joelle does something else. She incorporates. There are pieces that are uh, changed, transformed, uh, that she takes over, literally, the, the piece of other artists. Like uh, um, there is um, the poster of Guillaume Bail, uh, a Belgium artist, blacked out by Willem Orebeek. So it's even. Um, um, not even Joel doing something to the work of Guillaume Bell, but it's Willem doing it, asked by Joel. Um, there was, um, there is the bean of Gabriel Curie, which normally is never shown on its own. For Gabriel Curie, it's like a punctuation, um, punctuation um, sign in a sentence. So usually the bean pops up as uh, in arrangement with other um, objects. Here it's all alone and um, in relation to, to Joel's collages where the form of beam, beam pops up, which immediately creates a literal association, which is something directed by the artist, by Joel. So is the bean still a bean of Gabriel Curie or the bean becomes a bean of Joel? And of course, as a curator, when I work on shows, I have to, I don't have to, but very often uh, the work is about securing some type of um, context or meaning of the work itself. And here it's totally displaced. It's these objects are... Mm, and it's a question of distance. It's like Broadheart's eggshells. They, yeah. they are like this. The, they the, are pardon me, the Broadheart's eggshells? Eggshells. I don't see the eggshells in the context uh, of, of the what works. You said, what, what you said? No. Uh, it's... Um, they are eggshells. They are uh, like emptied of their original uh, mm. meaning and... Uh, you can inject Joel into them. If the author, sh I like that idea. If the the, the subjective authorship uh, is overcoming by a process uh, where he's occupied or she's occupied by the process of a bigger narration, which involves yes. that uh, uh, individual moment towards something else and uh, overcomes that uh, in a different kind of process. I think that's a very interesting idea and we, we are in that social uh, field that the subjective gesture of the artist is not uh, uh, is provoking something new and he is in a new state uh, of production on the one hand and he's a new, uh, in a new state of aesthetic uh, organization uh, which has to do with distance and we ha has to do with a new form of uh, authorship also. I yes. think these parameters are changing. And this is a question in a social uh, political dimension and in an aesthetic poetic dimension, this is a kind of um, question of distance. 
and I think the, it, it's interesting to see that. In, uh, to see that, for example, I saw this work of Martin Goodman uh, at the Graben, uh, and uh, work? Uh, Martin Goodman did a work at the Graben here in Vienna, where he built um, several objects within one form. Uh, and they are referring to a medieval uh, form of um, what has the, uh, violence, uh, folter, and uh, torture. torture. And uh, uh, <laughs> we talked about that. It's strange uh, that he, for this organization of the aesthetic form, he chooses a form w w w which is very narrow, like a block, uh, where these forms are. Uh, combined uh, from one to the other, uh, uh, which in a certain narrowness. Uh, and uh, I, w I, w I, w I don't want to be destructive, but I think uh, in the organization of the form, he is mirroring uh, something which he wants to underline. Uh, uh, but it's a, a kind of paradox question, and it's a kind of uh, question of distance. Uh, to break uh, this borderline down, that the fragments are wide open spread in the room, or they come into this narrowness and they re, uh, represent a process uh, which is, always, is ongoing in the media, uh, the coincidence of falling together by visuality and form as we see it daily in the mirror, uh, as we see it in the daily mirror, uh, as we see it day by day in the um, uh, extension in the, in the form of the medias. And this is a, an act of violencing and terroristic organization and representing uh, the cruelty of some social process. And I think the aesthetic moment has the chance to cut uh, this organization, and therefore, it's a question of distance, and the distance begins to play a big, big uh, role in the aesthetic organization. And it's not just a question of um, uh, uh, it's not just a question of aesthetic organization. This distance is a question of a political, social dimension. Uh, and Jacques Rancière quoted that out very, very right uh, when he referred uh, to Godard's model of uh, represent representing the form, that there is a splitting moment between visuality and text. Uh, so the question, what, what I asked uh, uh, when I come back to Duchamp's uh, big class, is not just a, a question of uh, up and down or an aesthetic paradox moment, it becomes more and more, this kind of distance becomes more and more uh, within the aesthetic field, the question of politics. Um, and therefore uh, we are, and that's why I said sometimes I'm uh, fundamentally, I like the work very, very much, but sometimes I'm questioning by this side of narrowness or by this possibility to further run and to stretch this kind of distance. Punkt. I like that uh, how you pronounce uh, visuality. You say a bit like visual, Joel, visuality. It would be a nice <laughs> it's a new word concept, to, uh, to stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I'm, I'm just uh, playing with the things uh, over <laughs> years. But we here we have some experts. Uh, they know their work may be better than me, uh, or they're working very long in the field uh, with this kind of organization, and they did a very radical work uh, like Sabine Folli and Moritz, uh, uh, which introduced me to Joel five years ago. And uh, uh, Mrs. Folli quoted out uh, some very, very um, interesting uh, projects, especially on this kind of organization. And maybe they have to ask or to say something uh, 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 in this kind, or they want to make a statement about that, what we, <laughs> what we, uh, what we already prepared. Uh, so I open that uh, and I give it back to you. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 No, and you know, I just wanted to to ask how that works when uh, Joel is in incorporating frames in her exhibition, 
and at the same time is working as a curator. So it's something I don't really understand. The, the That's a question for her. Yeah. It's um. I mean, I don't know the process. You know, the process. The process was uh, intense, short and intense. It's intense. <laughs> and um, my role in the process was to be as much as possible in Israel studio and be in continuous conversation about what, who is in the show, what. And it's even, sorry, when I interrupt, it's even more complex because the Snowd has been asked, and he asked you. No, 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 no. That no, no, was no, no. previous show. Uh, that's, that's not. Uh, that's not uh, okay. this show. That was something. Else. Something totally different. <laughs> With Joel, it's. Um, it was. Um, work working together through conversation. Joel, her work is also installing the the work. The way the pieces are installed is not curator's work, but. We've been in constant conversation. My role was more editing Joel. Mm -hmm. If you've ever worked with Joel Twerlings, you know that everything is possible, and it's possible to put every, <laughs> everything in one room. And um, my role was to, at one point, say, is it necessary to introduce that as well. Why is it necessary? Why? Because of course it's possible, but why? And then Joel thinks why? And then maybe she drops the idea to put uh, uh, this in. So I asked her at the end, what was it for her to, to work with a curator as she's not often working in such a proximity. And she said that for her it was uh, very crucial in the process. I sometimes wonder myself because uh, anyway is Joel taking every final decision, of course, in that process. So I wondered what's my role, but she reassured me that it's very crucial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, very often also when other artists were uh, invited to the show, um, wanted to maybe show other pieces, more pieces. Joel was leaving it up to me to, to decide what will be... Uh... Yeah, but my question was more about, you know, this related to incorporating her friends. It, uh, you know I mean? yeah, okay, this, this is nice to start the first conversation we had on the show. Friend, one of the friends, yes, the yes, yes, okay. The orbe, yes. The orbe, who makes a black out of the no, no, no. I, I tell you, that's very interesting. That's, but that's very natural and, and spontaneous. It was, we had um, a dinner with Joel and we spoke about uh, the show at Vils that is, there is a lot of things left. Joel just uh, um, simultaneously with this show, there is a big retrospective of Joel's work uh, in Brussels at Vils. And uh, she worked for many months, produced uh, a huge amount of pieces. And of course, not all could be shown in, at Vils. And uh, I myself very, always liked very much projects that are based on leftovers. I think that sometimes when we put so much pressure into one main thing, what is what is the tail of the thing is, has a potential to be more interesting somehow. And um, I spoke about it with Joel. What about uh, he is doing something with, with, with that? And then she immediately said, OK, let's do succursal, which is extension, spatial extension. So this extension of of Will's exhibition, of her studio space, of her holiday time when she was constantly working. It's prolongation of my exhibition because my previous show was uh, uh, also in that gallery and Joel was one of the participating. It's prolongation of Joel's. It's prolongation, it's again extension and it's amical. So it's even 
not only spatial and temporal extension, it's even, it goes beyond that. It's extension uh, through other people. And, um, and then Joel immediately drops some names. And some, uh, first we thought, okay, let's only focus on, ed again, me ed trying to edit. Let's only focus on friends you did collaboration, like Willem Orenbeek and Joel, they, they have a history of working together. Very um, interesting way of collaborating, kind of ping pong uh, thing where we usually can dissect what is Joel, what is Willem. And this collaboration when things don't really mingle, but there is one and two and becomes something strange on top of that and very interesting. And different types of collaboration like with Guillaume Bell, but also Gabriel Curie with whom she never collaborated. Only Gabriel Curie always wanted to do something with Joel. And then Joel bumped into him at Wills. He came to see a show and said, oh, why you don't join me in Vienna for the show? Mm. So. And I asked Joel why, and she said, I really like to do it uh, natural and spontaneous. It's important, uh, it's important. And then, does it matter anyway? Anyway, she takes the piece it, and she does with it what she wants. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. And uh, some artists were invited uh, very last moment, like Helmut. Um, Federle uh, was invited just the day of the installation and uh, Ria Packe as well and then just edit last moment as absolutely necessary elements of this show. <laughs> mm. So that's the process more or less and of course Oh, that's very interesting because Joel said something that all that is in the exhibition will rescue the exhibition and all that is not in the exhibition has also saved the exhibition. So <laughs> it's, it's about the friends, it's about the pieces that are included, but also everything that is not included, which is also part of the show. The process which ends in distance. And that's the distance that is there. Here there is maybe not so much distance, but it's... Um, I sense that mentally it has infinite distances. I feel something. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel to show is thinking to me. I have to be quiet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Obviously, I was not reading it carefully, and so I thought it was really Joel inviting friends <laughs> to do something, <laughs> and so I thought she was not absorbing and that's my interpretation. The uh, <laughs> because then I had to hear and I thought, ah, it's what it's, it's all on Joel more or less. So that's funny, and, and, and this is a, is a reverse maybe uh, experience that I made with her um, making my show. And on Coup de Day, when I invited her, and she was one of the like 30 artists. But I was afraid a little bit if she was like occupying the whole space. Um, but she was, yeah, I mean, we, she had an assistant of her own, and then she worked on her vitrines. Of course, she had statements in every part of the space somehow, but it was not really like absorbing everything. She didn't manage. Uh, no, 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 no. It was <laughs> accurate, accurate, uh, accurate statements, and very important <coughs> statements also. Um, I think, but um, yeah, on the topics you you made out, you worked out here. That's a little bit too dense now for me to True. react immediately. 
to to dance. Different to dance the whole the whole uh, to density dance, uh, the density uh, of not your not arguments. <laughs> No, they, they, uh, they, they are very simple. Uh, I, I think, in, in effect, they are very simple. Uh, uh, there are some topics in the modernity which uh, works with this splitting. Uh, we can see it new uh, from our uh, model. Uh, Picabia plays a big role. It's, it, it's continuing up to literary, to Austrian uh, high avant-garde form, I think, where uh, this literary is in front of the visuality. And it, it always uh, uh, comes to this point where uh, the distance or the narrowness or the splitting of uh, two medias to these two parameters, I think this is the world of Brothers uh, too, uh, is, uh, is in movement uh, from different sides. Uh, it's, it's, it's reachable from these arguments in a very interesting way from around here. This is the one figure. Or Deleuze, uh, when he said this sentence I, li I like so much, uh, the audiovisual archive is disjunctive. What means that? Uh, uh, that what we see is, it's a beautiful sentence, uh, 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 that what we see lays not in that what we say. This is the coup de deux uh, figure. He worked out in, in the very, very great text you. Uh, Published uh, from, from him, uh, it's, I think it's one of the really, really big uh, texts about that problem. Uh, what, and, and, and Foucault, uh, and, and Deleuze said about Foucault, uh, blinde Rede und stummer Blick. Uh, ist auch ein wunderbarer Satz in der völligen poetischen Verdichtung von dem Phänomen, blinde Rede und stummer Blick. Uh, Foucault sagt, er uh, ist dem uh, zeitgenössischen Kino außerordentlich nahe. Ja, er geht der Süberberg, diese, diese Spaltungen oder, 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 oder Dürer und, und dem geht er nach. Aber, äh, und, und Foucault untersucht dieses Verhältnis. Also es ist, dreht sich eigentlich in der Politisierung auch immer wieder um diese ganz analoge, einfache Form dieser Spaltung, die in verschiedenen Verhältnissen auftaucht. Und ein wichtiger Punkt in diesem ganzen äh, äh, Modus ist einfach die Distanz auch. Äh, wenn er sagt, äh, das, was wir sehen, liegt nicht in dem, was wir sagen, äh, das audiovisuelle Archiv ist disjunktiv, äh, das, was uns die Phänomenologie wahrmachen äh, möchte, äh, in der Philosophie existiert nicht, die Dinge sind gespalten, aber das, über das, was sie trennt, sind sie verbunden. This is a very nice sentence, I think it would be a very nice sentence for the show, the things. Uh, uh, the audiovisual archive is disjunctive. That what we see lays not in that what we say. Art and language, nicht? Das klassische Topos. Uh, uh, the things are split, it, but they are connected by that uh, what they are um, by this cut. Uh, and over this um, cut, ich muss es auf Deutsch probieren, sonst versteige ich mich zu schnell. Über diesem Spalt, über diesem Einschnitt, sagt er, liegt, ein, liegt etwas, das diese beiden Dinge verbindet über das, was sie trennt. Das ist nicht dialektisch, das ist keine Dialektik, sondern es ist was anderes. Es ist irgendeine andere Form des Und. Und ich denke, das ist die sprachliche Figur von dem... Spiel, das, das da irgendwie so angedeutet wurde im, 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 im Coup de Deux. Die, da kommen wir in ein neues ästhetisches Feld hinein und das, an dem arbeite ich und das möchte ich auch für die nächste Ausstellung hier zeigen. Die Dinge stehen in einer Form der Beziehung über das, was sie spaltet. Das ist nicht die Abstraktion, es ist nicht der Alltagsgegenstand, es ist irgendein anderes Phänomen der Beziehung, das die Dinge einschreibt. Die Künstler tun sich wahnsinnig schwer, weil man eine neue Figur irgendwie da sozusagen auf den Weg bringen könnte. Aber da liegt irgendwie ein ganz spannender Modus drinnen. Und vorgedacht oder vorformuliert ist das von so einem Kopf wie vom Deleuze oder, oder in der neueren Theorie von, von Rancière, der sich auf das Ganze... Und die Figur ist ganz einfach im Grunde genommen. Ne? Die Figur ist ja ganz einfach eigentlich. Aber sie ist komplex, weil sie sich immer mehr und mehr auffächert. Aber im Grunde genommen ist sie ganz einfach. Ich kann auch edit you. Uh, <lacht> like that. Yeah. Es dreht sich ja immer um 
Um, drawings <laughs> on how to draw or what is a drawing and she develops a system to make copies in several forms with a carbon, car carbon copy for instance where she takes a carbon paper to make a copy on another paper and then she takes photocopies and then she takes um, found footage and so on and so, so she develops her system mm. and in this way she takes also the, the works of her friends of mm -hmm. so-called mm -hmm. friends it's an mm -hmm. adaptation and uh, put it in her system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, you can think about whatever you want but uh, there are, with some friends there is a, a certain narrowness in approaching art let's say with uh, Willem Orbeck, who takes also covers from mm. uh, newspapers to make artwork, or with uh, Guillaume Bayle, who takes real situations he finds for mm. his installations, he's more sculpture. Well, for me, it's more something who is drawing, in a way. And also the third room could be a drawing for me. Mm. It's a, a mm. three-dimensional drawing. And the language is more or less for me in the title mm -hmm. where she um, indicates from which context the work stems and is readapted to this situation. This is the language part mm -hmm. of Joel. And if you see some numbers or um, mm -hmm. stamped um, letters, it refers for me to a um, archive system where she wants to make a systematic of her work which is always reversed and um, yes. these are indexes of, um, of um, a system mm -hmm. which doesn't exist in a way. Like Joel, because okay, Joel is often described as a conceptual artist yeah. but yeah. She, she likes to uh, talk about her uh, relation to, to the work is that she does exactly opposite what she thinks. <laughs> so it's uh, irrational conceptualism. <laughs> it's making a system and logics out of inventing own logics. Like you can, um, I think the lexicon which was recently published of uh, Joel's uh, Terminology is a is a very well expresses the the way she relates to her work. It's like a it's a universe with with all, own a very strict universe and still so open. That's the strange thing about it. But you said something very nice. That is that it is uh, she was working with leftovers. And principally, that's, that's everything, you know. Her yes. work are leftovers. And uh, uh, interesting is that some of the artists included have the same kind of, you know, uh, attitude of uh, working with leftovers. It's, it's a very, it's a very precise <laughs> <and> characteristic, <laughs> these uh, mm -hmm. leftovers. Huh? Mm -hmm. But also very interesting mm. when you say about drawings, that mm. Joel is more drawing, because there are these early drawings of Joel in first mm. room, but there is also a work where she glues a paper on a, on a painting, and then she says that was a very um, break, breaking through moment for her, where she put on the paint glued a paper that was for her the moment she is not anymore a painter but a scu sculpture. So the but she's also very good in these kind of stories. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the way the um, but it's also interesting to look at work this work in a way how the work itself 
uh, discusses all these issues of medium, because it's also... Mm. Das ist aber sehr gut, was die Elisabeth gesagt hat, dass sie den way. Status des Bildes immer befragt, auch durch diese poveren äh, äh, Kopien, das Kopie der Kopie und so. Nicht? Das, immer dieses, befragt man den Status des Bildes und so. Das, oder eben durch dieses, so, durch dieses Left, aber... Das wird recycelt. Ja. <lacht> But the artists, um, they were invited and they were very happy to accept the invitation. So I don't want to make it sound like Joel invited, mistreated, poor friends. It's um, they they were happy to to allow Joel to to do something to their work. They were curious what she will come up with. <laughs>